Today, Osama bin Laden is dead, and so are most of his top lieutenants. There have been no large-scale attacks on the United States, and our homeland is more secure. Few of our troops are in harm's way, and over the next 19 months, they will continue to come home. Our alliances are strong, and so is our standing in the world. In sum, we are safer because of our efforts. Welcome back to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. That was President Obama in his first major foreign policy speech of his second term. He said that there have been no large-scale attacks on the United States, a curious comment given what just happened in Boston. Editorial board member Dorothy Rabinowitz is here to parse the president's words. Dorothy, uh, it seems to be a consistent inconsistency between the president's rhetoric and reality. Mm -hmm. Why? There's a good reason for that. It's, that speech was like a Rorschach test where, you know, the whole part of you is exposed to the world, your different needs, your different values, and uh, a lot of people felt that. I think one of the most interesting things, in addition to the no, no big event, uh, the sense that we must, and I quote him, wars cannot go on forever, this one must end. Well, you want to ask the president, what if the enemy out there doesn't agree with you and thinks that the war goes on forever, as indeed this implacable terrorist enemy has said, has sworn repeatedly and does. And then there is his strange view, often uttered these days, that uh, Al-Qaeda is on the run. Well, where has it run? It has sprouted all kinds of groups working in us and working very effectively. Uh, they're out in, in everywhere in the Middle East where there's turmoil, they're in Africa. So if Al-Qaeda's top network chiefs are gone, they have still very effective battalions. Dorothy, I want to give the president some credit because he did adopt many of the very successful Bush anti-terror policies. But again, this this tension and that he, he adopts the policies, that's the reality. And yet the rhetoric, as we heard yesterday again, yes. uh, really distancing himself from yes. those policies. Why? Uh, well, you know, it's true. And I say I do want to give the president credit because it took him, you know, absolutely defying his very own rhetoric when he was running for election, being despairing of our morality. And then as soon as he took office, he immediately began to invest in the wiretapping, the surveillance, all, those all of those things. And so what happens is uh, he is torn or now willing to accommodate his uh, left base that have been at him and at him again about what a great disappointment and he's looking to his legacy okay that's the rhetoric though and the rhetoric has consequences doesn't yes. it the, the consequences are that you have an illusory picture put out before the world you know it's not for nothing that great national leaders among them winston churchill and others want to arouse the people of the nation to be stalwart to understand that they are in danger, that they have, not to alarm them, but to say, we have an enemy. But to tell the United States, huh, you know, it's sort of all over, and we'll go back, we'll, open, we'll close Guantanamo, we may put a few of, of, of the most desperate characters there in the United States and put maybe at a U.S. criminal court. All of these things serve to close the eyes of the nation, and this is a very dangerous kind of illusion, and it does not cause much uh, Americans essentially to be trusting of the present. They see before them the spectacle of this horror massacre in Boston, only to be topped by a, a, a near London. beheading in London. And you have to say, well, that's London. Well, no, it's not. It's the same. It's the same forces swearing allegiance to the most extreme Islamic radical forces. And in the face of that, we say what? So what do you do? You look at the president who ought to be saying, we have a war, the danger will face us. And indeed, in the next sentence, he is saying that. We're going to continue drones, only he's going to have a more defined way of doing it. So he hasn't entirely given it up. But the merging of these two things in his speech, the illusion, we're off on a new, more moral tack. We know you've been waiting for this and the reality of we are in considerable danger. We are in considerable danger. Editorial board member Dorothy Rabinowitz speaking truth to power again. Happy Memorial Day, Dorothy. Thank you.